Hi, this is Frank Shamrock, MMA legend, UFC superstar, and you're listening to MMA Crib Fighting Talk. Gregory Stone, MMAcrypt.com. On today's show, I'll be speaking with Bama World Welterweight Champion and the Ultimate Fighter 16 veteran, Eddie Fastellis. Eddie has a pro MMA record of 90 wins, 15 losses, 1 draw and 1 no contest. Eddie is currently on a 7 fight win streak. With that, I'd like to welcome to the show, Eddie Fast Ellis. Welcome to the show, Eddie. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure, Eddie. Okay, Eddie, it's been uh, some time since we last seen you compete inside the cage. It was uh, September 2013, to be precise. It was at Bama 13, as you defeated Jim Wallet to take the Bama World Welterweight title. Uh, that's uh, roughly 16 months ago. Is there a particular reason why we haven't seen you in the cage for such an extended period of time there, Eddie? Well, other than other than the the, the initial extended period from from just healing up from that uh, pretty devastating uh, face break I had, uh, other than that, it's just been a complication of of um, getting the timing down with Bama, um, kind of getting treated improperly, I would say, for for personal reasons uh, through the organization, not 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 coming forth with things that they said they would do, and then um, and then also also trying to get me to fight guys. Um, for for a low low compensation, it's kind of I would say the reason why I haven't been back over. Uh, you mentioned about the face break. Obviously, you broke your jaw in the fight. Your tooth came out. So, how long did that take to heal? First and foremost, did he? Uh, hard to say. Um, I, I talked with a couple of different specialists. They said at least six months just to let it set up to to start to harden. And they said about a year's worth of time before that bone is actually back to normal strength now you mentioned that uh, obviously there was talks between you and Bama but they didn't live up to what they supposed to have done uh, could you elaborate on that please was you was there some fights in place potentially that sort of fell through because of certain reasons well you know and they never were in place I actually I got dis- disrespected pretty heavily right off the bat um, within six weeks of having surgery in in country um, they are offering me fights to come back and uh, defend my title to rematch Wallhead within six weeks. I'm thinking, you guys sent me to the hospital. You know I have my jaw wired shut. Why would you even? Why would you even offer me six weeks out? I understand that. I, I see now that you obviously don't want me as your champion, but uh, I, I, I did the belt. I did my job. So why not treat me as such? Uh, I thought it was fairly disrespectful. And then after I told them that I, you know I'm a, I'm in need of a considerable amount of time off um, before getting back in there, uh, it kind of got just washed away as. Oh, oh well then. And then they didn't even contact me back to see how things were going. Nothing for six months uh, until I had to literally uh, send them my receipts and like pulling teeth from these guys to get them to give me my money back that I spent while in country that I was supposed to be paid for. I was supposed to be had per diem, you know, while you're there. Um, I ended up covering my end and then having to having to negotiate to get my money back out of them six months later. Um, and I thought that was pretty disrespectful as well. Um, along the side of, of all these guys telling me that I should give the belt back and that I didn't deserve to win the belt. And lo and behold, I never even got a belt. I won the fight fair and square, but I didn't even get a, uh, get the championship belt to come home with me. I never got, uh, anything other than paper written saying I won this, this so-called belt, um, that I never actually received. Wow. So what actually happened because you was given the belt in the cage. So did they take it off you backstage and say, "Hey, we'll, you know, we'll give it to you"? Because some a lot of fighters just take the belts with them, you know, wherever they fly back to the country, or whatever they take it on the, you know, the plane with them. Uh, what happened there between Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Um, you know, and I, I, I thought the same thing. Of course, I I did scour my contract and look back, and it actually never says that you'll leave with the belt, uh, technically. So I guess they they don't have to if it comes down to contractual form. But you think, you know. Um, uh, it's a very reputable organization. They, they, they've done really well with themselves. I don't know if all the champions have to give up their belt or were using just one belt altogether, or was it just me? I don't know for sure, honestly. Uh, I only met, the, the, I believe, the owner or the promoter one time, very briefly. Uh, he jumped in the back of the um, ambulance with me. I was getting carted off, about to head to the hospital to get my jaw fixed. And I, I remember I was, on, I was on morphine heavily, so yeah. hard to say for sure what really was said. But I remember hopping in and congratulating me. And I, I made a big, I made a comment saying, "Wow, I'm surprised I got the decision in country." And, he, and I remember him getting a little, a little frustrated with me, saying, "Like, well, we have, we have good judges," and that wasn't what I meant. It was just, you know, you, you have to, you have to. It'd be almost the same as coming in and, and barely beating a champion. They almost always give it to the champion. So it was just a, a quick thing I said, and I do remember that. So I wasn't too out of it. 
And then I said, um, and my, my cornerman said, what about his belt? And he looked at me and he said, you'll get your belt. Don't worry about it. And then they closed the doors and I got harder away. And so it just feels like a pretty, pretty direct, uh, stab at that. Maybe they just didn't, they just didn't feel like, uh, um, I don't know. They didn't want me to win. Well, you know, I don't know. Hard to say. So what's the process? Because obviously for people at home watching on telly, they see you have the belt, then obviously they just assume that you go backstage with it. Is there a point where the promoter takes the belt off you? I never before. This is my fourth, uh, my fourth title of belt to win in my, in my career. And, uh, you go back and do the interviews. You have the belt on your shoulder. Yeah. They talk about it. They talk about your fight. And literally in the middle of my, my second interview, I had a guy peek over to the guy's shoulder that was asking me questions. And then, point at my belt and asked for it back and I I don't know if they even showed that interview but I got real disappointed and I took it off right away and they told me no 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 wait for the interview to be over and I thought no <laughs> I don't care if you're gonna take it away I know what that means you know I know how I know how this goes I've seen other organizations that do this you take the belt away and I ain't getting it back and lo and behold and there you go Wow. Well, you mentioned about the decision there. You didn't feel like you would get the, the decision in uh, the UK, obviously, because you're not the hometown guy. Obviously, Judo Jim Wally yeah. is a big name in the UK. Now, this Absolutely. brings me on to a certain subject. Now, I like Frank Trigg because he's, you know, he covers MMA really well. You know, I watch his interviews with MMA Odds Breaker. He's, he's obviously a former fighter himself. So I, I don't really want to knock on him, but uh, I sort of felt like he shouldn't really have said this. He's entitled to his opinion, but uh, he got in the cage for his post-fight interview. The first thing he said to you when you get the belt strapped on you, you know, you're there as the champion, is from the commentary booth, I didn't feel like you won the fight, Eddie. Now, <clears throat> was you a little upset with Frank about that? You know, his first comment being, I sort of didn't feel like you won the title. Eddie, we got to be honest from the commentary booth, we thought it had swung the other way. What did you honestly feel when you walked off that ring, especially after losing a tooth in the first round? You know, not at first. Not at first. I, I, I see how people can, can take case side and see something uh, when they're, when especially they're emotionally invested. Uh, I feel that Frank, uh, after, after watching and hearing the commentating, hearing him, the moment I even walked out of the, of the, of the arena, or I mean, of the, to walk out to the cage, he was already starting in on um, comments that were uh, not only rude, but they're incorrect. He, he thought, he thinks that I trained with this other fighter that he doesn't like. And I think that's why he got this big bad attitude against me. Two reasons. Because he didn't like the guy he thinks I train with, which I don't. And then two, he got beat by Wallhead, and he didn't want me to beat Wallhead. He wants to at least let his re record shine through to make himself feel better that this awesome champion has beat me, and that's the only, you know, he, he beats everyone else, and he beat Frank. But since I beat him, now Frank is third man on that totem, and I think, I think it was just more emotionally invested on that, and I think that's, yeah, an improper side for a commentator. They shouldn't be emotionally invested in it. They should give their heartfelt of what they actually see, not what they're uh, what they're worried about their own their own ego side. So I feel like um, he disrespects me heavily. Uh, if you watch the pre-fight preview um, interview he gives me, we do a Skype here at my gym, and man, he's he's giving me all kinds of credit. Think I'm pulling for you, Eddie. You know, America, blah blah blah. And I get there, and it's and it's every single word out of him is how I train with this this other guy and, and I, I, I don't run my own gym, but it's just so he's so off base and he's like, he didn't do his homework. And, uh, I feel like it was just an emotional thing he did. Yeah. You talk about the interview you did for MMA odds break. Uh, that, that's the ones I enjoy. He really breaks down the fights really well, uh, covers the sport well, but it, I do feel like he gets too personally involved. Sometimes there wasn't it. There was a case after yours. He interviewed Ollie Thompson right after the bout. Now, as far as I'm concerned, every fighter is entitled to their own opinion. If they didn't feel like they lost, yeah. then they didn't feel like they lost. Uh, he's just there to ask the questions, not to give his opinion. Uh, Ollie Thompson felt like he wasn't choked out. He felt like the referee stopped it too early. And Frank's like being kind of rude, saying, come on, come on, you know you got caught. Pat him on the shoulder. It's, it comes across quite rude and disrespectful. We've had this with Colin Fletcher too. He, he got his facts wrong about Colin. Quite rude and disrespectful. Uh, so maybe it's something... Frank might need to change in his game a little bit, but uh, you mentioned that Bama don't want you as your as their champion. Is there a particular reason you feel that way, Eddie? Other than obviously taking your belt and yeah, well, I mean, I can I can understand this. Um, I never fought for Bama before the, the, my title fight. They needed a, a fighter that was semi equal to Wallhead's uh, um, record because he's a great big record. Yeah. Um, I was willing to fight anybody in the world. I tell anybody that right now, anybody, and. They they called me in because they need uh, they need a champion bout for Wallhead. It was made for him to be the champion. I I see that. I'm, 
I'm sorry that I got picked, you know what I mean? Because I'm not going to go over there and I'm not fighting for belts. I'm fighting for fights. I went over to fight Wallhead. I didn't necessarily care for getting the belt. I was just there and that was, that was the circumstance. But then after you're not going to give it to me and then, you know, I came over there kind of filling in a spot because I'm not like a up and comer on the Bama, on the Bama um, scene. So I feel like that was definitely a fight, you know, for Wallhead in, in sense. But I mean, I don't think they expected the fighter that I am to come out there and do what I do. And, um, and then, and then I still, so I still feel that way. I feel like they kind of like, crap, we, we put our cards in this basket. And it didn't work out. And they kind of treat me as such. Well, there is some weight to that argument, to be honest with you, Eddie, because, uh, also at Bama 13, a lot of the underdogs won. You won your bout. You wasn't supposed to beat Jim Wallet. Uh, Mansur Barnawe defeated Kurt Warburton. He wasn't supposed to defeat Kurt Warburton. And Jason mm-hmm, Jones mm-hmm. defeated Max Nunes. Now, these were the three guys Bama were building up. And since then, Bama have gone on to feature all the three people who lost on that card, promote them, uh, put them as the headliners, co-headliners, and the guys who actually won the belts that night have not competed. Jason Jones hasn't competed, and you haven't competed. Mansur Barnawe did compete. But that was because he was fighting Colin the Freak Show Fletcher, who they've been promoting really well. So there is some weight to your argument there, Eddie, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, that's disappointing. I, I feel it, you know, but there's no proof on it. But at the same time, hearing it from you and then other, other people, they watch it, they talk to me, you know, so I feel that same way. Um, you know, I I took some time this whole this whole last year and um, weight kind of shed it off a bit. And when we were talk, talking to Bama a few months ago, I had mentioned, I said, hey, you know, um, uh, I'm just, I'm here. I'm, I'm pretty light. Why can't I come back and maybe fight again? Uh, take a 55 pound belt. Maybe we can have me and me and your guys a champion fight. And they, um, my manager said they were kind of perturbed about it. They didn't like that idea. And then I was like, well, you know, what's, what's the, what's the big problem? You know what I mean? Um, they come back and send me another guy at 70, basically no, no response to my 55 pound offer. And then, um, since then it was a very low offer. So I said, well, I want more money. Or I want two cornermen. Like I, I want something from this. I I asked for my belt and I never got it. I finally got my per diem. It's just things that they aren't coming forward to do yeah. to make me feel like I should go back and do that. And, and it's nothing to do with the the UK fans or, or not not a fight that I want. It's just uh, I want to be treated properly. I've been doing this a long time. I'm not um, I'm not a newbie. You know what I mean? I'll tell you what really surprises me, Eddie, is they put a lot of promotion into Paul Semtex Daily. Now, Paul Daily has come out after a post-fight interview and said he would like to fight you for the belt. So I'm really surprised now because they've given him two fights against uh, two guys what didn't really make sense. Do you really hmm. think that they should line up a fight between you and uh, Paul Daly in 2015? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the fight with me and him would be great. Um, I, would, I, I, I recently offered um, coming back and defending my belt at 70. And then um, getting a three-fight deal saying I want to be at 55 for the next two. Um, because I feel like that's just a better way for me nowadays. I just, I'm just i a fairly light 70-pounder, and that's just where I should go. Um, but again, like I said, I got, I got nothing back. No, not even uh, uh, maybe, not a maybe, not a will consider it. I got nothing. So I feel like um, if they do, they do have me back, um, obviously they're going to have me for this big title defense that I, I know will be um, you know, not really, really bringing home anything other than my W. So uh, I think that I should be compensated properly. You got an opponent like Paul Daly, which is a high caliber opponent, and I want to be paid a high caliber dollar. Um, and if that's just not the case, then it's just not going to happen. Well, you talk about being paid, uh, you know, the correct amount of dollar and uh, renegotiating for a certain amount of fights, uh, a certain weight. Uh, just what's your contractual status with Bama? You know, I want to talk about uh, including your belt in this. Is there like a. Uh, a certain clause where you don't defend your belt for a certain amount of time, just in case, you know, if they don't want you as the champion, you know, they can uh, sort of leave you on the shelf until you vacate the yeah, title. Absolutely. You know, and I only had a one fight contract through, through them at that time. It was only yeah. just a one fight deal to come over and fight, which is also why I know that's all they wanted me for was one fight. Um, but on the side, on that side of things, it's just, um, I'd come back for a fight for one fight and then they can re- relinquish my belt. I don't care about that. It, it could be, um, because 12 months, I say if you're out for 12 months, you're, you're off of any ranking, really. And it's been 16. So, yeah, you guys should have your own interim champion already anyhow. Can you compete elsewhere while your contract is Bama? I can. Okay. Do you see yourself returning to Bama at any point, personally, for you now, looking at everything that's gone on? Do you sort of see yourself returning? Uh, difficult, to, difficult to answer um, because there hasn't been much said recently. 
and I'm still talking with my manager about other places. Um, I guess we're just willing to we're willing to really just take any offer, honestly. I want to They're going to come back and, and make it right, then yeah, I'd definitely fight for Rama again. Well, I want to talk about Lisa for a second, because obviously she's got a UFC contract now. I wanted to know, how does this Absolutely. play into your career? Because obviously, you know, you, you have a child together now. Uh, I'm assuming with one of you fighting, one of you would have to stay at home and look after the baby. Just how does <laughs> Lisa having a UFC contract now sort of play into your career? Well, it, it's, um, we've, we've had a, uh, a pretty steady career, both back and forth. For, for years now, her and I have been fighting and and uh, and managing our relationship for ten years together. Yeah. Uh, obviously, now with the baby, it's a little more difficult. But at the same time, she has she has her parents. Mom, um, uh, our daughter's grandparents watch her when we're out. We all took off for the UFC together. Uh, the baby stayed at home. So things like that are all they're all manageable. Um, it's just a, it's just a timing thing. Then um, they they mentioned this uh, back when they were offering me a fight at seventy. It was right around the same time. Uh, Lisa would be fighting for, for the UFC at that that the, the finale card. Yeah, and uh, and so that was going to be a rocky one. But then it, then it, it basically washed away when I asked for uh, said, well, yeah, once you guys give me the belt and things like that, and then it just they just stopped offering again. So at this time, it really won't won't matter much at all. Uh, her and I have fought separate. I, I went to Bama uh, for that belt alone at the time because we just had the newborn. So yeah, um, it's really it's really doable. We've we've done it for quite a long time. Uh, obviously, you was on the Tough 16 show, so I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. was there any advice that you gave to Lisa before she actually went into the house? <laughs> yeah, I tried. I tried. <laughs> uh, I gave her. I gave her some advice. Um, the biggest hard hardest part is is, is realizing that it's, um, gosh, it's a game show. It's really not. I mean, no matter how real we want to be there as fighters, but you're fighting two round fights. Uh, they're expecting a whole bunch of you, uh, regardless of your training time, and um, you just gotta you just gotta kind of roll with the punches can't be too serious on that show the whole time otherwise it'll probably be crazy but um you know and their series was a bit different than mine obviously at least i got along with some people those girls seem to be um pretty hard on each other <laughs> uh lisa did lose a tough finale bout to uh, fleece herrig it was a very highly contested contest between them both very competitive uh, just how tough was that loss for lisa there and yourself because you could tell lisa trained really hard for that fight yeah, you know, it was it was strange. Um, almost one of those fights. I've I've been there. I've I've uh, had some long time off between fights, and uh, not knowing how you're going to compete when you come back out there and you start, and you feel like you're underwater almost. You're slower. You're everything. You're almost watching yourself fight, and that kind of looked like one of those fights she was in. Um, she has light years upon light years of of uh, advantages on the ground beyond Felice, and it looked like um, it looked like there were even competitors on the ground, which is not the case. Uh, Lisa has been a multiple world champion in the in the field of world grappling championships um done so well in gi and no gi and uh his, her ground is ridiculous and that's what, what we uh we definitely neglected was was even sharpening her tool on the ground we thought once it hits the ground that fight is is night and day yours and um and when she hit the ground she looked like she was in under you know underwater or fighting in quicksand it just seemed to swallow her up and she wasn't moving like she normally would and Felice was on on and on again, and I definitely made it a good a good fight for the crowd. Um, I was uh, I, I was freaking out a bit because, her, like I said, watching her in multiple fights in the past, when she hits the ground, it's usually hell on wheels, and girls have a hard time keeping up. And uh, her slow pace and her um, her movement was was uh, freaking me out. <laughs> so round out the interview, just how long are you going to give Bama to renegotiate your fight before you actually move elsewhere and compete for a different company? Oh goodness! If if another company came up and gave me the right the right match tomorrow, I'd fight there. Uh, it doesn't matter, honestly. Like I said, um, my ultimate goal is just to fight for the biggest organizations and the best amount of money at, at this point in my career. And uh, whoever comes forward with that is, is is the next on the list. That's all I really care about. Okay, one last thing, Eddie. Is there anything you'd like to say to your fans, the Bama fans, or even the Bama offices who might be listening? Well, any of the Bama fans, I apologize to you guys uh, for not coming back and, and giving that second match for Wallhead right off the bat. If I could have, I would have. Uh, now that he's at another organization, I don't know if you want it, but I'd be sure happy to move around and, and find that fight if that's what people want to see. Okay, from the MMA Crip Fighting Talk Show, thank you for watching.